Uh, now it's time for another very interesting talk, this time from a STIDI student, Alexandre Veilleux, winner of the second edition of the STIDI Best Thesis Award. Um, <laughs> yeah, Alex, come here. He will illustrate as his thesis, um, which will be published by the end of year by the publisher Franco Angeli. The title of his work is LGBTQ, Tourism in Thailand in the Light of Globalization, Capitalism, Local Policies and Impacts on the Thai LGBTQ Community. So please, Alex, come here, the floor is yours. <laughs> Hi, ciao. Mm. <laughs> I'm very nervous, but uh, happy to be here. So, dear fellow graduates, professors, and academic staff, first of all, I would like to thank everyone who made this graduation ceremony possible. When we first heard about this thing called the COVID, we were all doing or looking for internships in all part of the world. And little did we know that this thing was not going to go anywhere, and many of us ended up leaving without think saying goodbyes. So it is a great pleasure to be all reunited where everything started three years ago. And I feel very honored to have the opportunity to present the findings of my thesis. So the thesis, which is called LGBTQ Tourism in Thailand and the Light of Globalization. And the inspiration came by traveling. So I noticed that when you travel as a white man, you will get some privilege that the local LGBTQ population was not entitled. And so with this in mind, the research aim was at investigating what was the role of the government and the promotions of LGBTQ tourism. And second, to determine who wins and who loses from these tourism policies. Now, why will some governments decide to target the LGBTQ tourist? In one word, money. In fact, at the turn of the century, more and more companies got interested in the LGBTQ market since they are more likely to take holiday they spend more during their holidays and have a more consumeristic lifestyle. It was estimated that the gay consumer market was actually the fastest growing in the world. So now many tourism destinations, they brand specifically to this community in search of what is called the pink dollar. And due to the important economic benefits associated with gay tourism, there is an important incentive to adopt legislative measures regarding LGBTQ rights to attract more tourists. But this can lead to pink washing, which is like the, the gay thing for green washing. Now, <laughs> now let's move to the case of Thailand. So Thailand is seen as tolerated, but unaccepted. So basically taboos regarding homosexualities are not based on legal or religious sanctions, but rather on cultural norms of appropriate male behaviors. So the smile nature of the sanctions against gays have given a reputation to Thailand as being very LGBT friendly, for international travelers. And because tourism accounts for nearly 20% of the country's GDP, it makes this an important sector for the governments. And the number of tourists pretty much doubles every year. And so the very rapid rise of tourism made the country facing over tourism issues. So in the new tourism plan, they aim, aim at attracting quality tourists. And one of the market segments included in quality tourists is the LGBTQ tourists. And so to answer the first question of the thesis and understand the involvement of the government, I divided the evolutions of LGBTQ tourism in a few phases. So the first phase is the birth of a sex heaven for gay Westerners. So basically in the global event, there was the Vietnam Wars in the 1960s, 1970s, and many American troops were deployed in Pattaya, which at the time was a very small fishing village that the US needed for a military base near Vietnam. Now locally, Thai entrepreneurs realized that there was a market there and they established many bars for commercial sex. So it started with female sex workers and was soon followed with men, resulting in the creations in the 1980s of a gay red light district. So the result was that during the 1980s and the 1990s, the rising popularity of the sex industry resulted in a boom in the number of tourists visiting Thailand by 10 times. And almost 90% of visitors were male. So the sex industry flourishes even though prostitution was illegal in Thailand because the bars were able to operate through a system of bribery that was given to the police and the army. 
So in fact, the bribery costs about uh, $1,000 per month to keep the gay prostitution bars open. And then this corruption allowed the nightlife business to thrive. And then the go-go bars only existed because the police tolerated it, owing to the fact that they were obtaining money from it. Then things start to move on in the second phase, which is the increase of gay tourism because of a military coup. So in September 2006, the Royal Thai Army staged a bloodless coup d'etat against the government. And the military managed to take power. And following the coup, they declared martial law. They dissolved the parliament and suspended the constitutions. The military coup was criticized by human rights groups such as Human Rights Watch and the Asian Human Rights Commission, Amnesty International, etc. So despite taking power, what the military lacked was legitimacy because they were not elected democratically. Seeking legitimacy, the military gave as a reason that they did the coup d'etat to further protect human rights, such as LGBTQ rights. And as such, they use LGBTQ for political gains. The search for legitimacy allowed, allowed a boom in many LGBTQ businesses from 2007, including an increase of commercial gay avenues, commercial magazines, etc. In fact, the military in Thailand has always been very pro-capitalist and pro-market. So the military government allowed gay businesses to thrive and develop, which was not only beneficial for the Thai economy, but also giving more legitimacy to the non-elected military government as a protector of human rights. Now things started to change in the third phase from 2013. So the Tourism Authority of Thailand started to promote Thailand to LGBTQ tourism specifically. So the authority created the website Go Thai Be Free, which targets specifically to members of the gay community. In 2013, they released their first promotional video targeting specifically this, these customers. But the campaign was mainly broadcasted in Western countries by the Tourism Authority offices and New York. Actually, almost all of the characters in the videos were white, and not much people in Thailand have heard of this campaign ever. Also, when the images are shown out of context, the pictures are not gay anymore. I'll, so, I'll show you some pictures later. Um, and indeed, same-sex couples are rarely shown in highly affectionate poses. So they are vague enough that these people could be relatives or friends. So they will not shock the conservative Thai population. Now, things started to move in the last phase, which started very recently. The goal was to target the rich segments of the gay community. So in 2019, the Tourism Authority of Thailand released their second promotional video, this time with more confidence. So the campaign is much more diverse as was, and was shown in more countries. And the other major difference is that affectionate poses are more assumed in this video. So it went much further by showing a wedding and even a kiss between two women. So the question is, why now? Well, first, Thailand was starting to lose this niche, this niche market to other Asian countries that were getting more and more LGBTQ people. In fact, in the last few years, other Asian destinations, such as Taiwan, Cambodia, and Hong Kong, started to be more tolerant towards gay people, and other destinations, such as Singapore and the Philippines, were developing a gay nightlife very rapidly. So as the other Asian destinations were blossoming for LGBTQ tourists, the Thai government slowly started to promote this des the, their destination to this niche market. The second reason is because the tourism authority realized that the pink dollar had very high economic potentials, which were estimated at $5.3 billion in Thailand only. But interestingly, the government does not target Thailand to all gay people. They target specifically to the rich one. Actually, I spoke to the responsible of the campaign, and he even stated to me that the economic interest was the primary driver in the campaign. And he said, economic interest was the primary driver for LGBTQ travelers because they are more likely to spend more, they are more brand loyal, and they travel with greater frequency than their straight counterparts. Audience segmenting needed to focus on those with the greatest propensity and ability to travel, and the LGBTQ market was an obvious target. So, as you can see on the images, on the left you see the campaigns from 2013. So, affectionate poses, this is the most obvious one that I found, and they're not um, obvious at all. And then on the other one, it's much more um, visible. And the other element is the money from it. So, on the left, you see people dressed in very casual clothes. 
And then in 2019, almost every images that you show is people very well dressed with suit and ties, um, getting massage, room, room spa, big infinity pool. So basically they're targeting for more luxurious tourism. And actually on the website of the Go Thai Be Free, they don't promote any small gay guest houses, but just hotels like the Sofitel, Le Méridien, and Ayat. So these are very important consequences for the populations on two elements. The first one is the diminution of gay businesses and the decreasing gay-specific tourism. So since 2017, the rise of new luxurious development projects, including luxury hotels, retail outlets, and condominiums, transformed the gay touristic area into a hub of finance and commerce, thus catering for different, more high-end tourists. The result was the closure of many uh, red light district in April 2019. And that's what you can see on the images. So in this area, it was a very important um, gay nightlife for the local populations. And by targeting to the luxurious ones, they are building very luxury hotels, five stars hotels with big commerce. Um, and then they started tar targeting for the gays as well, but it's more mainstream tourism for the rich people. And the other, uh, consequence was the inclusion of the Thai middle class from the gay touristic area. So the area is quite expensive for Thai people. So a few of them from the middle class can actually afford to go to some of the parties, which cost to participate has gone much higher. I ended the, the, the thesis with a question that I asked is tourism can lead to some legal rights or can they be accused of pink washing? And in Thailand, actually the promotions of gay tourism is rooted in an economic logic. But does it necessarily mean that Thailand is doing pink washing? So the argument to accuse Thailand is that the country does not recognize more rights for gay, but it is marketing itself as a gay paradise. So according to Western standards, Thailand could be seen as doing pink washing. But I believe that this argument is quite Western centric. As was explained in the literature review, which I didn't tell you, human rights vary from Western to Asian countries. So LGBTQ activists from the West, they proliferate construct of identity that privilege public visibility and laws as the dominant barometers of social progress. And despite important to Western people, the emphasis of public visibility and laws is not very common in the Thai culture and the political system. For instance, it's not very easy to adopt legal reforms in Thailand and though it is not Thai custom to draw attention to oneself or display affection. But it doesn't mean that the LGBTQ people are treated worse than in the West. There might be less law protecting them, but it doesn't mean that they face more discriminations. Actually, actually I spoke with many of them and even people who live in Western countries, they say that the Thai society is more tolerant than in the West, but just less publicly accepting. One of them, even who work in the U.S., stated that he actually felt less discriminated in Thailand and less judged by people. So the fact that Thailand's cultural and political system does not fit Euro-American ideas, that social progress regarding sexual diversity must be based on public visibility and legislative measures, lead us to assume that the country is not necessarily doing pinkwashing per se. And I just want to finish with something, because now what many of you might ask is what the hell is the link with sustainable development? So <laughs> um, I've heard the quote that considering that tourism has the potential to contribute to all of the SDGs, it is crucial that LGBTQ people be further included in the sustainable development of the destinations. And only then can tourism really become a level for sustainable development for all, when I mean for all, and accomplish its mission for, of achieving peace, prosperity, and universal respect for human rights. Thank you.